Ever thought about how you use your arms when you're running? I'm gonna show you one tip that will help you improve your running technique and run more efficiently. Okay, so one point that I wanna get across in terms of arm carriage when we're running is that the rhythm that you create with your arms is inherently tied in with the rhythm for your legs. So the speed that you move your arms directly affects the cadence that your legs are going to be running with. So we all should hopefully be on board with the idea that we want to be running with a high cadence to prevent you from overstriding. In fact, I covered that in my video about Elliot Kipchoge um, in his successful challenge attempt. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link down in the description. But I want to talk about the fact that in that video, you can see that the pacers were actually all running with quite a short angle at the elbow. They're running with what I kind of sometimes jokingly kind of refer to as T-Rex arms. You know, they're here rather than what we often talk about or often view or picture in our mind's eye in terms of running with 90 degrees at the elbow, back and forth, this slightly longer and wider swinging arc from the shoulder. It's almost like they were kind of, again, as I sometimes say, they were running kind of almost with thumbs in braces here. Now, if we think about it, what we're really creating by creating a shorter angle at the elbow is we're creating a shorter lever that the arm is swinging with. If we think about from the shoulder, we're swinging back and forth as a swinging lever or as a pendulum. Here, think of it as a third class lever if you like a pendulum. Then the shorter that pendulum, the quicker it's going to tick tock back and forth. It's going to be easier to create a high cadence when we're moving our arm back and forth in this shorter position here than it is if we're open at the elbow to more of this 90 degree type position, which is what we often talk about when we're sprinting. When we're sprinting, we're looking to combine stride length and leg speed. Now Usain Bolt is famed for having such, such a long stride length and also being able to maintain his leg speed to later in the race. That's why one of the reasons why he's as quick as he was. But what we'll see with those guys, with sprinters, is that they do keep a more open angle at the arm and they swing through a bigger range of motion because again, the range of motion we're seeing, particularly in this backswing, directly also correlates with the stride length that we're seeing from the legs. Now, as distance runners, we're after an efficient, quick turnover with the legs and from a stride length point of view, we're not after the same long stride as we want to see from a sprinter, we just want to maintain the turnover so we land close to underneath our center of mass whilst being able to maintain the pace we're running at. So, a short, back and forth choppy arm swing is gonna be far more efficient for us than if we're working with this big, long, open angle at the elbow. Now the challenge for a lot of runners when trying to create a slightly shorter, a shorter angle at the elbow, a more efficient swing back and forth, is that they get very tight through their traps. They end up in this elevated position here, get very tight through their shoulders, and over time this becomes uncomfortable. If that sounds familiar, then check out the video also on my channel, which talks about a very simple cue to allow you to relax your shoulders and run without that kind of neck pain. If you're interested in that, check out the video right over here. Okay, if you found that helpful, if you'd like more information about running technique, check out all the videos on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe, and of course, hit the like button and let me know if you have any questions. I'll speak to you soon. Bye now.